G'day, Paul Michaels from Real Dog Training with my second dog training video. So today's video is about, it's actually about something that come up in the first video I made last night. And that was, I spoke about the overall relationship that you have with your dog and, and how important it is for this to be right. So you can you can have your whole routine with your dog sort of not quite right you know you, you're not really kindling it um, when it comes inside it gets to jump up all over the couch and not that anything's wrong with having your dog on the couch you can do that but there's specific ways in which you need to do that so the dog doesn't get to jump up on the couch whenever it wants and if you tell it to get off the couch it has to get off the couch and you win all those little battles if your kenneling is not quite right, or the way you're you're conducting yourself around your dog 24/7. So it's this 24/7 thing, and and the fact that every moment in interaction with your dog is a is either an opportunity to build or lose real respect. So, an example, or and sorry, the other thing is is that so it's that every moment is really important. And everything is linked because it's all all part of this overall picture. Um, there's a lot of different sides to this. Um, a lot of it comes down to the way dogs view the world, which is very, very different to the way a human views the world. So, um, and one really important part of that is the fact that through evolution, for millions of years, dogs have always needed to have a very strong and competent leader. And to not have that in a pack means meant that they were very unsafe. Dog, dogs are very instinctual and they react more than... More than uh, real rational thought that hu that we have as humans we're always thinking about we can rationalize the whole time so we can think um hey someone's just pulled up the driveway modern day society it's um generally when someone pulls in the driveway nothing dangerous is going on we'll just wait for them to come to the door and see who it is and talk to them and see what's going on but Dog can't don't rationalise like that. A lot of it is in, a lot of their behaviour is instinctual and reactive. So to a dog, it's instinctual reaction when someone turns up and they don't know who they are yet and they and they haven't had a chance to meet them, assess the situation and work out exactly what's going on there is just treat it with caution because for millions of years any uh, unknown outsider turning up could be a serious threat. So dogs just, just react with those instincts. So one example of you not setting up the relationship and the respect right and then that tying over into other things would be exactly that. When people turn up, you just sit around, don't do anything, um, this is why kenneling is so important. If your dog's left just roaming around the section instead of being put out out of the way somewhere, um, then it feels like it's responsible to deal with outsiders turning up, and then that's when you get dogs that go nuts every time someone turns up because you're not you're sitting back doing nothing. Your dog's out running around; it feels exposed. It looks around, no one's taking care of the situation. It reacts with those ins instinctual behaviours that have been set over millions of years of evolution because it can't rationalise the way we can and just think, oh, it's, I'm living with humans now, we're in modern day society, and generally when people turn up, it aren't a threat. It can't, doesn't think like that. It's a dog, it's, they think completely different to us. Um, all the dog can see in a situation like that is that there's no competent leaders out here. 
There's no one taking charge of the situation and whether it feels comfortable or not taking over, it will step up and do it because otherwise it's just, it's an instinctual reaction. So something like that is... Is one of, is a prime example of, of one a moment screwing up the way your dog looks at you, and an example of that being linked is if you you're screwing up all your leadership stuff around home, and your dog isn't viewing you as a competent leader, which is who is safe to to be a subordinate to, then that is linked to other situations like. Um, if you go to walk your dog at a park and another dog start, is, is coming the other way, well, your dog's thinking, well, this person that's on my master or my master that's that's got me walking on the leash that's trying to take control of the situation isn't competent. So you, your dog will be trying to step up and it'll be getting its hackles up, tail up. It's trying to run the situation because it doesn't feel like you're competent. And, and, and all that is, is that situation there at the park is linked to what you've been doing around home. You haven't even realised you've been doing anything wrong. You, you don't know why your dog barks every time someone turns up, but that's why, because it's not comfortable. Um, so that's just a general, sort of general dog behaviour situation where, where one thing can be linked to another and, and have a dramatic effect for, for hunters. Um, if you don't have all of that stuff set up around home, a good routine of kenneling and the dog, um, you know, feeling like there's, there's strong leadership about the place is um, if your dog doesn't view you as a competent leader through the routines and practices you set up in everyday life 24-7, when it goes hunting, it'll be far less likely to hunt with you as a team and want to stalk you in on a deer for example take you all the way in and then stop at that final moment for you to step in and take over the hunt and take the shot it's going to be far more likely to want to maybe break and chase the deer or push push in too fast or something because it doesn't view you as a competent leader and a competent leader isn't a competent hunter and again it's that instinctual reactive those instinctual reactive behaviours that will just come out. So if you want your dog to really, really cooperate with you, be happy to listen and happy to take direction, you've got to be seen as a very, very competent leader the whole time and in charge of the situation and in control. So your dog feels comfortable to take that step down. And most dogs want to do this. They don't want to be up in control. But if they can't see anyone that is, they, they, they will instinctive, instinctually try to take over, whether they want to or not. So you've got to be seen as leading the whole time. And this is this is what I'm talking about about setting up their overall relationship. Huge. It's like a real, real quick overview on it. What are we we're coming up ten minutes here and almost nine minutes? So real quick overview on that. Um, there's so many side note videos I could make. I could break this right down into all sorts of other little videos um, and talk about kenneling and routine and dealing with people turning up and. Um, the way to set all this up but th that's just a quick video on some of the main parts to it huge 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 subject so that's video number two see you tomorrow